In March, a rebel group called Seleka seized power in the Central African Republic. Since then, a new president has officially disbanded the Seleka forces, but they have refused to stand down, prompting an array of other fighting groups to spring up. Chaos looms. I'm Zan Smiley, The Economist's Middle East and Africa editor, and joining me on the line from Abuja is Gillian Parker, our Nigeria correspondent, who has recently been in the Central African Republic. Gillian, there's a rising worry that the Central African Republic is getting out of control and chaos is beginning to spread. Can you tell us who's fighting whom and what's it all about? Um, so, uh, Seleka, which is um, which means alliance in the local language, they took over the country in March. And uh, since then, this been looting and pillaging the country. The president actually disbanded Seleka, but um, and actually incorporated some elements into the Indian army. However, there are still thousands of, say, former Seleka members that are wreaking havoc across the country, and they're exacting a lot of the violence at the moment. However, um, there are also groups that have started to retaliate against Seleka, and this is exaggerating already um, a lot of violence there. So um, the anti-Bilaka, which is anti-machete or anti-sword in local languages, uh, they have uh, started to fight back, and um, this is causing a lot of additional violence, um, and inevitably a lot of innocent people are being caught in the crossfire. So that's really where the main fighting is, is coming from. From the wider African point of view, the Central African Republic, one of the poorest countries in Africa, doesn't seem to have much going for it, but it does have at least six countries surrounding it. Why should the rest of Africa, to put it bluntly, care about what goes on there? Uh, well, there is a very high risk of still other conflict and uh, we're, we're starting to see a little bit of that in Cameroon where they've had some cross-border attacks in recent weeks. Fortunately, they have been able to contain um, any violence there, but there have been several fatalities. Uh, you know, the surrounding countries are vulnerable, uh, extremely vulnerable to conflict, and that's a huge concern. Um, on the other hand, uh, a few months ago, people did see this coming, I and mean, this is this situation is not a surprise. Uh, everyone predicted that uh, the Central African Republic was going to end this way. Uh, so, uh, in the same breath, it's a, the question maybe should be, well, why didn't they act sooner? Uh, because you know we all knew that this was going to happen. Gillian, as the chaos spreads, is there anything that outsiders, the UN, the African Union and so forth, can do to make things better? Well, NGOs are calling for uh, a, a bigger deployment of UN um, forces in the country. Uh, also, um, the French have not pledged to troops on the ground to bolster security. However, you know, when I was in Bangui, French the French troops were really protecting assets like the airports and um, maybe artillery roads. But uh, you know, it's all very well protecting the capital, but really the main atrocities are happening outside the capital in, in more rural in more rural areas. Um, so that's a major concern, and I think a concern really for for people within Central African Republic is will the response be enough and will it happen soon enough? You know, the UN is notoriously slow. You know, will they be able to get their act together in time to, to do something um, because the country is rapidly deteriorating? That was Gillian Parker, our Nigeria correspondent, and I'm Zan Smiley of The Economist in London. Mm -hmm.